Check out the Russell 2000, managing a gain today, but still down 11% this year. Our next guest says there are some gems among the beaten down group. The last time she was on about a month ago, she picked Jack Henry. Since then, the stock is up about 12%. Let's welcome back Kane Anderson Rundick, Portfolio Manager, Senior Research Analyst, Julie Beal. Um, Julie, what, what's your take on small caps right now? You know, I think if you look across the market cap spectrum, small cap is the one that's been most beaten up. And that makes sense, right? You know, you're thinking about uncertainty in global markets. You want companies that are larger and can weather downturns. And I think that makes sense. But I think in small cap, you can find great businesses that are very much in charge of their own destinies. And you have less global exposure, which I don't think is a bad thing right now. Yeah, let's start off with your picks. Clearwater Analytics is one. It's a software as a service company. Um, what gives this sort of uh, control over their destiny, as you like to put it? So one thing that's great about Clearwater Analytics is it does reconciliation for asset managers or insurance companies. Once you put in this software, you are not ripping it out. It is integrated into workflows and all of the processes. And so it has high switching costs. And so with 98% retention of its clients, you know that there's a lot of durability to the earnings. And for that, I think investors would be willing to pay up. Do they upsell once they have a, have a customer in? Are they able to sort of enlarge the revenue stream from that one customer? They can, and to a certain extent, a lot of times they've been benefiting from higher AUM. So, you know, in some ways is yes, but generally speaking, you buy the whole platform all at once. So when they have an increase in sales, you see that as really being new logos, and they've been able to just take share consistently over the last few years. If you look at their sales and marketing, they're only spending 11% sales and marketing of uh, revenue. That's very unusual for some of these SaaS businesses that are spending 40, 50% of sales on uh, to generate revenue. It's, you know, just kind of a weaker point. Um, let's get to Ali's bargain outlets. Uh I, I guess in a, in a recessionary, potentially recessionary environment, I should say maybe this is a good one. <laughs> I think this one is nice. It has a little bit of upside if we have a stronger economy, but I think it also protects you if, let's say, COVID rears its head again or we are in a recession. This business is a discount closeout merchandise retailer, but they have lots of regular goods that you could come in for, your toothpaste, you know, your sunscreen, that sort of thing. But they also will just have weird merchandise that they'll have on super sale, like, say, a space heater for $13. You don't really need a space heater, right? But you're like, sure, for $13, it's such a great bargain. So I think they have a really differentiated business model. This business is not impacted by Amazon, right, because none of this merchandise is allowed to be advertised online. So that's a real nice thing to not have to compete against Amazon. I have a closet full of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, one, twelve dollars. <laughs> That's a bad. You might need it down the line. Um, I, but in terms of inventory, like with inventory so tight, Julian, supply chain issues. How is it with inventory in terms of getting that weird sort of unique merchandise in the door? So this has, I think, been their challenge, and I think that's the generally been the, the weakness in the stock. But this is a company that has a lot of scale. And so if you're trying to move discount merchandise, say you change the packaging on your sunscreen, right? You don't want it to go on Amazon because you don't want that to be there to be price discovery on that discount. But you have a lot of it, so you're going to go to the biggest source of that. And so Ollie's uses its scale to get the best kinds of deals. With inventory supply chain mismatches, what you see is that people order too much and then they don't get their seasonal merchandise in time and Ollie's is able to buy that, that excess. So they're really well positioned for any kind of supply chain challenges, which I think we're going to continue to have for quite a while. Um, your last one is right move. We're just about out of time, but just quickly, Julie, um, what does this company do and why do you like it here? So Rightmove is a company in the UK. They have 90% market share of the listings for uh, real estate. And with that kind of, you know, concentration, they're really able to dictate how, where their business is growing. So even in a softening demand environment for real estate, I still think they're very well positioned. And through a cycle, this business really generates powerful returns. Julie, great to see you. Thank you. Julie Beal. Thank you. Bonwin, do you like any of these picks? I do. You know, I think Clearwater makes sense. I mean, uh, Dan spoke a bit a bit earlier about being in the VC space. And what I, one thing that I do know from my context there is that they're typically going to pay for software as a service 
and those are going to attract much higher type of multiples. So being that this, that has stickiness, you know, when I work, when I'm investing in small cap companies, I'm worried about economic cyclicality, things of that nature. So the fact that that has a service as a SaaS unit to it, that makes it, you know, a bit more attractive to me. That, that, that's a great layup, Bon. When my friend Jeff Richards, who's watching, just tweeted at me, he loves net dollar retention, or net retention that is above 90% right there. You have this company growing sales at 20% a year expected with a 75% gross margin. Stock seems kind of cheap to me. How does Ollie stack up to your dollar gen guy? I know it's a completely different size, right, well, but... Listen, anytime you can get a space heater on sale, I'm buying it. I will say Wells Fargo <laughs> just put a $65 price target on Ollie's after getting obliterated from the summer of 2020. I actually like it here. I don't know who Ollie is, but does it really matter? <laughs>